This is a demonstration video for Stockpile Tracker, which in its earlier versions was called Warehouse Tracker. Although this demonstration is on a test and development machine using fictional dates, some of the data was provided by a customer, so numbers have been intentionally blurred to protect the customer's data. The Stockpile Tracker program consists of two major pieces. The first major component is a web browser interface that lets authorized users in all parts of the plant see the shape of the stockpile mound for any particular hour. We're looking at a side view or profile of the mound at a particular instant in time, which we call a snapshot. We're looking at hour zero of April 26th. Along the bottom, the x-axis, is the position along the base of the mound in this case from north to south. The little n here means this is the north end. The y-axis is meters of height. We use special symbols to show the positions of the tripper car and the scraper. This little round dot is the tripper car, which deposits material onto the mount, while this small rectangle represents the position of the scraper, which scrapes material off the pile onto a conveyor belt to remove it. The other part of the product is a Windows service that runs in the background. This service is responsible for using real-time data from the historical system to recalculate the shape of the pile every hour. The service wasn't running, so I'll just start it. The service writes to a log file and to a Windows event log. You may wonder, how does Stockpile Tracker use real-time data to model the shape of the mound? It uses four pieces of data, four real-time tags or data points. Two real-time measurements are related to the tripper. The other two real-time tags are related to the scraper. What it needs to know about the scraper is where it is horizontally, and also it needs to know the angle of the main scraper arm. From this, the shape of the scraped parts of the mound can be inferred. For the tripper car, the application similarly needs to know where the tripper is horizontally along the length of the pile. Also, trippers normally have a height sensor to measure the height of the mound under the tripper. Using this sensor, the tripper mechanism knows when the pile is full at one position and the tripper should be moved. Stockpile Tracker uses this height measurement to modify the computer model of the mound as the mound grows. Stockpile Tracker records which of the parts of the mound have been scraped since that affects the geometry. The region over which I'm moving the mouse has been poured but not scraped. There's a little yellow bar under the parts of the mound that have been scraped. Although the application only recalculates the shape once per hour, it uses continuous tripper and scraper data to do this, so the hourly shape will reflect changes made during that hour. There is a set of tools that the application administrators can use to troubleshoot and maintain Stockpile Tracker. One of those tools, which we call Visualize, permits a high-speed playback which can be very informative about how the pile changes over the weeks. The advantage of using Visualize is that it shows an alternate view, a cross-sectional view. I can change which cross-section I'm viewing by clicking on the profile at the lower right. You will notice in the cross-section that for poured parts of the pile, we model the top of the pile as a flat area rather than as a perfect point. This represents the curved area at the top of the pile which is formed by the spray coming from the tripper. The tripper does not deposit all the new material in a perfect point. You'll also notice that Stockpile Tracker can model floors which are not flat. The customer in this example uses a floor that has an indentation in it to accommodate the large scraper arm being below ground level when fully lowered. This is a portal scraper with a primary arm that moves through this arc and a secondary arm that descends on this side. 
If I choose a scraped cross section, you can see the shape created by the action of the two scraper arms coming down. The primary arm scraped here, and the secondary arm scraped this area here. As I choose lower and lower cross sections, you can see the shape as the scraper arms move lower and lower. This is a cross section where the material has been fully scraped away. One of the advantages of using this tool is that you can play back the changes that have occurred over days and weeks in the history of the stockpile. I'm going to press the play button here, which plays forward in time. Keep your eye on the small green dot at the top of the profile that represents the tripper, depositing new material and growing the mound. Also keep your eye on this lower green dot that represents the position of the scraper. You'll see the mound slowly growing under the tripper dot and being scraped away by the scraper dot as the scraper moves left and right. I'm now playing. You can see that this area is being scraped and reduced in size and you can see the effect on the cross section as it becomes lower. Over here you can see the tripper car is moving slowly to the left while the mound underneath it is slowly extended by newly poured material. I can stop this and play it backward. We're now watching the same events in reverse. The area under the scraper is now getting higher as we go back in time, while the area under the tripper is growing smaller. There are some other features of the interface which I haven't shown you. There is a panel here, for instance, which, when clicked, opens up an editing matrix, similar to Excel, to permit editing, copying, and pasting of values. You can see the numeric data that's the basis of the profile graph, and you can even edit it. The grid allows you to interpolate a height between two points on the mound so that you can create smooth slopes when editing. It's also possible to edit the positions of the tripper and scraper, normally. No editing is required. If we look further down, there's another graph. We've purposely made our viewing window small for this demonstration, but users would normally use a screen and window size that allows them to view both the upper and lower graphs at the same time. What we see here is the inventory in the warehouse. You can see that it was growing over time as more and more material was deposited. From here to here, there was a little bit of shipping, and then it continued to grow, and then there's more shipping. The x-axis, in this case, is time. The y-axis is thousands of tons. We can expand the view to include more time, in this case, a month. You can see how, in normal operation, during production of new material, the stockpile grows. And when the scraper is active, of course, production continues, but material is removed at a faster rate, so the inventory goes down. It's possible to click and drag using the mouse to create a zoom effect on both graphs, both this one and the upper graph. At the bottom of this graph, you see the amount that was produced and the amount shipped during the time period shown on the graph. I can choose a shorter period, for instance, from here to here, and then the numbers show only how much was produced and shipped in that shorter time. Well, let's go back to the first graph. The effect of zooming is that the number of usable tons shown here will be reduced to be only the usable tons visible in the zoomed area. I could, for instance, select just this smaller part of the pile here, and you see that the number of usable tons is reduced. The other numbers below the usable tons represent material which is not usable because it's part of the compacted carpet layer on the floor or at the ends of the warehouse, which is considered to be off-spec. That concludes our short video demonstration. There are other features of Stockpile Tracker, but you can read about them in our brochure, available from our website, www.inlibra.com. We hope that this demonstration has helped you to understand how Stockpile Tracker can enable your personnel to have an overview of the stockpile and available tons without having to physically visit the mound.